spoke to them. And they trusted in Jesus. And they were cured. Now, how many of y'all have heard me say this time and time again? What God has done, He can do. And what He can do, He will do. Amen. God has not changed. Amen. Amen. Right. The way that God helps people has not changed. The cure for these problems is the gospel. Instead of writing them off and saying we have nothing to do with them, we ought to seek those types of people out. Jesus did. We ought to seek them out and share the gospel with them and so they have a chance to get saved. So that the Holy Ghost of God can move in and move out everything else that's possessing them. Amen. That's the cure. Amen. That's the cure. You say, well, preacher, what about those what about those that are saved, but they're being oppressed? They're having that uh, the oppression of the devil. They're constantly being attacked. <clears throat> For those battling anxiety disorder, schizophrenia, and dissociative identity disorder, they need the gospel. For those who are saved but are continuously oppressed by Satan, you need to avoid things that drive a wedge between you and God. Stay away from drugs. Stay away from alcohol. Stay away from worldly music. Stay away from the modern, charismatic, contemporary type of worship. Stay away from sin in general. Stay close to the Word of God. Stay close to, to, uh, to true Christians that are striving to live righteously. Stay close to the altar. Make it a point to soul win. Make it a point to be very active in your Bible-believing church. Look around our own local church. You know why people are here? have the issues and battle the things that they're, they're battling with, they're not here. Yeah, they're not here. You're right. They're the one, I'll be honest with you, and I'm not saying this to be mean, and I certainly am not calling any names. But they're, also, they're the very ones who call me, Preacher, I need prayer. Pray for me. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. Well, you know why you're going through this and you're going through that and you're being oppressed? It's because you're not spending time in the Word of God. You're not being faithful to the house of God. You're not being faithful to the things of God. You're not being around the true Bible-believing Christians who are trying to live differently than this world. And so what you're doing is you're opening yourself up to be oppressed by the devil. Amen. Jesus Christ is always the answer. Amen. Luke 1.37, For with God... Nothing shall be impossible. Amen. For those that are battling mental disorders, I'm telling you, there's hope. You're right. And it's in Jesus Christ. Amen. There's hope. The closer you draw to Him, the Bible says draw nigh unto Him and yeah. He'll draw nigh unto you. Amen. Amen. The closer you are with Jesus, the less room there is for the devil to work his way in. You're right. And to mess things up. That's right. Amen. You're right. 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that it may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him for He cares for you. The Gospel is the answer. A relationship with Jesus Christ is the answer. Why am I battling the things I'm battling? How close are you to Jesus? Why do I have family that's battling these things that you're talking about, preacher? How close are they to Jesus? What are you doing to help get them closer to Jesus. Amen. I say this about that situation that happened last Sunday. And I'll be done. Had that pastor taken the time, and he, I'm sure he probably did, take time to make a pray with him. But I think preachers are too quick to say a little prayer and then leave it at that. Some people you got to take under your wing. Some people, you've got to spend more time with that individual for them to get that help. Because some people are just not as strong as others. That's just the way it is. I believe had he taken the time, instead of spending time on the phone, calling different facilities, hey, can you take this guy in and medicate him? And Everybody with me? How do you spend that time with that man, one-on-one, -on -one, praying with him, maybe doing Bible study just the two of them? Maybe last Sunday wouldn't have happened. That's where we need to make sure that we're strong and we're walking with God because there are others that's going to need us. The preacher can't do it on his own. Amen. I try my best. And I promise you, I try my best to help everybody I can. And I can't help everybody. Amen. And that's why I preach the way I preach. To encourage everybody in here. Be faithful. Draw close to God. 
Have a close relationship with Him. Why? One, it's good for you. Yeah. It'll keep you from being oppressed. Mm -hmm. It'll keep you from being burdened down. Mm -hmm. But also, it makes you strong to where you can help somebody else in need. Yeah. To me, this is the cure. It's not in a padded room. It's not on a doctor's couch. It's in Jesus. Yeah. He said, well, preacher, it's easy for you to say. That's what preachers are supposed to say. That's what the Bible says. It's true. Amen. And if we would put these things into action, draw close to God, do everything we can to help others come to a relationship with Jesus Christ, I believe we'll see it turn around. I believe we can see it turn around. You say, well, preacher, what can this little church do to affect the whole country? We start with our own local area first. By the way, I don't have to have a doctor to tell me this to know this. we got some kids that come to this church. Some of them ride on our buses that are dealing with this. Yeah. yeah. We do. Yeah. If you just open up your eyes, open up your mind, open up your heart, yeah. and look at each individual kid we have to come in on through our bus ministry, and you will see there are some of them that are dealing with this very thing that I'm talking about here this morning. And you know why that is? There's alcohol in their home. I know, I've seen it. There's drugs in their homes. I know. I've seen it. No doubt there's abuse going on in the homes. Folks, if there's ever been a specific age range I say that we need to target, it's that age range that I mentioned earlier. The young adults, the teenagers, the young adults. We need to reach out to our young people. Amen. We need to make sure we're walking close with God so that we can encourage them to have a relationship with the Lord and walk close with Him so that, so that these kids don't have to repeat what mom and dad's doing. Right. Just because mom has some mental illnesses and has, and has taken 30 different pills for it doesn't mean that they have to. Just because dad is dealing with a mental disorder doesn't mean the kids have to grow up and deal with it. Amen. But we see it happen a lot of times. This person's battling it, their, their parents are battling it, and when they grow, the children battle it. Why is that? Because nobody, nobody tried to go and reach those kids before it affected them deeply. That's why I love the bus ministry. That's why I love the bus ministry. When every head bowed, every eye closed, I hope all this made sense. I hope that it helped you. I hope that it encouraged you. I believe there's help. And I believe that help is always in Jesus Christ. <coughs> every head bowed, every eye closed, everyone standing to their feet. This altar is open here this morning. This altar is open here this morning. Whatever you have need of, why don't you come? Nobody's going to thank anything. I promise you, folks, we're a family. I love my church family. We're a family. We're close. Now, I wanted to preach this this morning just because of what happened last Sunday. But I really felt that it was needed within our church. Folks, it's easy to come burdened down. I'll be honest with you. I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you here this morning. There are times that I deal with that depression. And I believe if every preacher would be honest, that every preacher does. Because you're, you're not only dealing with your own but you're, you're there for everybody else. And so when you see things going on in their lives, it burdens you down too. And so I'll be honest with you, I needed this message. I needed this this week as I was studying it. And it encouraged me. Yes, I know. I know I'm supposed to have a close walk with Jesus. But this encouraged me even more to draw closer to Him and let Him have His way in my life. Why? So that I can be strong. And so that I can stay strong and get stronger so that I can help others. If you're here this morning and you're battling depression, anxiety issues, you're battling maybe some mental disorders, don't worry about what society thinks. Nobody here is going to look down on you. We love one another here. And we ought to want to help one another here. And if you're here this morning and you're battling something, please come to the altar and give it to God. 
feel free to come and talk to me or somebody else in the church and we can work together to work through the issues and draw closer to Jesus together so that Jesus can have His will and His way in our lives. I don't want the devil to have a foothold in my life. I don't want the devil to have a foothold in your life. The devil has no place in our lives. You trusted the Lord Jesus. If you're here this morning, you're saved. You trusted the Lord Jesus Christ with your eternal, never dying soul. Why can't you trust Him with everyday life? Why can't you trust Him with your mind? Why can't you trust Him with your battles and struggles and issues that you have? With every head bowed, every eye closed while I look around here this morning. I wonder how many of you, you know somebody that's battling something like this, that's going through depression or battling something like this. Won't you slip up your hand because I want to help you pray. I saw that hand. I see that hand. I see that hand. That hand. Several hands went up. That hand. You know what I want to do? I want to help you pray for that person. Because I believe that Jesus is the answer to everything. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Several folks still on the altar here this morning. I want to ask you this. Are you willing to do what it takes to draw closer to Jesus? To have a closer relationship with Him? Are you willing to maybe forsake some things so that you can be stronger spiritually? I tell you, giving up some things is it's worth it if it gets you closer and having a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's worth it. It's worth it just for simply for the clarity of mind and a clear conscience, a clear heart to be able to give up some things. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The gospel is always the answer. Is there anybody here today? You were to die today and you're not sure that you go to heaven. Won't you slip up your hand? Is anybody like here this morning? Because Jesus is the answer to everything. No doubt everybody in here, you know somebody based upon their testimony. They're lost. The devil has a roaring, roaring line that walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He's after your family. Parents, the devil's after your kids. The devil's after your friends, your family, your co-workers, your neighbors, your classmates. What are you going to do to help them not fall victim to the devil and his oppression and his possession? Let's have a close relationship with the Lord. Walk with Him so that He can use us. So that we can be stronger and so that we can be a help and a blessing to others. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank You for this day. Thank You for all Your blessings. Thank You for Your Word. Thank You for the truths that we find in Your Word. God, I pray that You help us, Lord, to draw closer to You, spend more time in Your Word, be more faithful to You, so that You can strengthen us and, and then get us to a place where You can use us to help others. God, I pray that You just uh, move and bless in a mighty way in our lives, God, and, and use us, Lord, to, to affect others for the causes of Christ. <laughs> We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless y'all. We're dismissed. Don't forget we got service tonight at 6 o'clock.